black girl nerds. Better shake your booties for black girl nerds. I am a fan of yours and I love that you have become part of this franchise. I think it is a wonderful addition to, to see you in the role of Colette. Colette is a, a very interesting role. She has to sort of tread this line between being a boss and being tough for the external, but internally being a place of comfort, a place of understanding and, and wisdom. Um, what has, when you read through Colette's journey and what has happened to her from now until season three and landing on stars, what struck you most about that role, the role that was uh, originally created by Naya Rivera? I think what struck me most about this role, um, I mean, she felt like a real person. I I, I know that con considering the situation, it's uh, what happens and some of the <laughs> the secret, the dark secret that she withholds is not your everyday kind of situation. But I mean, it's somebody's story. And sometimes when we come from a dark past and we're trying to, you know, make our lives all the better and at the same time, nurture the, the lives of other and taking care of so many other people, it just felt like what a who a woman is, what a woman embodies. We're multitaskers, you know, we have this strength and this power to, you know, to make miracles happen, let's be honest with you. And so if we can do that, we can make anything happen. So when I was learning um, her story um, and then understanding what was happening when I was going into this season, um, I really wanted to take precaution and not just jump into it like I just know what I'm doing. Like I wanted to learn this character. So prior to this, you know, the late great Naya, she did, um, Rivera played this role and she did such a fantastic job. So I wanted to continue to tell this story in a way that was still compelling, um, but, but became my own and also to... Um, just continue to this run this marathon together because I'm so impressed with what she did and I've always been a fan. So, um, you know, I think step by step, day by day, you know, can the the each episode and each scene that I have with each character is what helped lead me to understanding my version of Colette Jones. And the storyline is just so juicy and it's so crazy. I was like, ooh, you know, we don't get this opportunity every day to play a character like this. I mean, I come from a lot of the time romantic comedies and kind of like really na played naturally kind of like uh, softer roles. And this time I'm like, well, this is this other side of me. And when it comes to defending somebody and making decisions in my life, it's a whole other me that comes out. Mm -hmm. So I'm able, I was able to show that side through this character on this season. I was feeling it. You know what, I'm, you know, you say that you, uh, you, and it's true, you've been in a lot in uh, comedies and, and rom-coms and things like that, but I was feeling it. I <laughs> like you in this role because you have that beautiful softness that you bring from those beautiful roles. And we get to see the, the, the boss. Uh, step it up. You know, we you're a boss in your own life. You've had a you continue to have a beautiful career, a mother, raising the family, and doing all those things. And so watching the chemistry that you brought to Colette interacting with uh, Neo's character Sage, it was it was a great, great dynamic. And it meet you guys really made me lean in and think about what are these dancers and performers doing when they're on tour? What is the secret world that I'm not part of with negotiating and managing egos and a company of egos, a personal relationship egos. And it just explores a lot of those really complicated themes. What insights do you have that you brought to Colette that you feel made her truly your own? I think the insight that I brought to the table, I mean, Yes, I've always been a performer and the entertainer, but when I think about the manager and the woman who has helped develop, you know, uh, whether it's artists or actually a business, High Water was not developed from the ground up only by Sage. She really, really groomed a lot of these artists and helped make this 
school as great as it has become, you know? So for me, I really thought about just like the managers, even my mom, my mom's been my manager for years and to see how much work it's taken her to gain the respect and, and, and to be in a man's world and to be a woman who is related to somebody who is the singer, the actor, and even just trying to gain that respect to say like, oh, well, you're just, you know, you're just the fiance of, of Sage or mm-hmm. you're just the mom of Christina Milian. No, I gained this. I have this right to help put out the fires. She shows up because I make the desire to help make that happen, you know? And so that's what happens with Paulette. I think she she understands her power. She is, she's very confident about it. Um, and and she is a, a great decision maker. So I've seen some, I've been definitely influenced by uh, a lot of new, women in the music industry and I admire them. And, um, and so I could say parts of this character is definitely them. Mm-hmm. Well, Colette for sure makes miracle happen because those first three episodes, my goodness, that, that in alone to make that scenario happen was a miracle. And I think the fans are going to have a really, really good time watching this new navigation stepped up in every mm-hmm. aspect, performance, sex, character development, and, and now you, and you do a really beautiful job. Thank you. Yeah, no, it's exciting. It's a really, I mean, and you just said only, I think that was a good big, like, they're going to be like, what are you talking about? We want to know more. <laughs> it's going down. It's, it's going down. This And it's not only my character. There's a lot of different characters, some new characters, a lot of talented people, great dancers. I even dance and I perform in, 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 on this, uh, this season. Um, the drama is really, it, it, you, I never connected drama with Step Up, but now that I'm in it, I'm like, oh yes, it is some drama going down. So if you like a good, if you like a to talk about some shows and stuff. This is one of those that you're like, the cliffhanger at the end of each episode is gonna keep you talking. For sure. Well, I thank you so much for your time. Have a wonderful premiere. Congratulations and have a great season. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you ladies for your time. Ooh, y'all got some trauma and <laughs> I was into it. I binged all the three episodes together and congratulations on, on the move, the stars. Congratulations, Rebby, for joining the cast. This is going to be a very, very exciting season for all of you in the show. Uh, Rebby, beginning with you, since you are the newbie to the cast, mm-hmm. clearly you are a multi-hyphenate, talented person like everyone who is part of this cast. So when you get the call to, to join the show and it's moved to a new platform on a bigger scale, what did, what did you do? Where were you? How did you celebrate? Did you did you do a, a, a you know, eight count? You know, how did you celebrate getting I mean, the, the landing? So, well, firstly, I... I never actually made a decision to pursue acting. So it was actually booking this that, you know, really brought me into this world. So none of it felt real. It wasn't something that I thought I could do, that I'd be good at, that someone could tell, you know, would tell me like, we want you for this. And such a huge, a huge role in an amazing show in a massive franchise that is dear to me because I am a professional dancer. You know, I grew up watching Step Up movies. Um, I binged the first two seasons in like two days while I was auditioning and was immediately hooked. So I was like, well, this is like a a real show. Like there's so much drama, there's dance, there's talent, it's it's sexy, it's, and I, I love watching TV. So, you know, someone that loves to watch like television shows, um, I knew I was like, I have an opportunity to be a part of a great one and it's going to stars. So, you know, that's a whole nother like element. It's just been a whirlwind and a dream. I'm honestly, most of the time feeling like it's not real. Like I'm literally like, pinch me, you know, this is happening. Um, (laughs) No, I just, I really like the show as a person. I was a drama nerd in high school. I can't dance. So I will tell you that right now. I could two step at the barbecue and that's about it. But just watching this, I love creative people. I love dancers. I follow a lot of dancers in social media. And this really made me lean in like, what is really going on when dancers are on tour? 
or is there, is there some saboteur things at work? You just never, never know. And I love the storytelling. Jade, over to, over to you. I love the vulnerability that your character brings because co- dancers are very confident people. They're used to performing in the masses. And I like how um, Odelia writes that kind of line of vulnerability and sweetness, but she is fierce and a force to be reckoned with. When you think of your own historical dance experiences, is it difficult to, to maintain that line as Jade does throughout the season? I think it's it's honestly, it's easier than it seems just because you can bring your actual self to this character growing up as a professional dancer and just coming into an industry that I'm not originally from, you kind of do feel that backlash and that hate always. There's always that competitive edge. There's always those people who look at you in a different light. So it was kind of like me telling a side of my story, if that makes sense, while while having a whole new character to to showcase it with. Odalie definitely knows what she wants, but she also has a big heart. It's just, she kind of gets, she puts herself in the wrong circumstances, in the wrong situations, and doesn't know how to go things about things the right way, which ends up making enemies rather than the friends. And really all she wants is to be a successful dancer and to live out her dream and to be loved by the people she's doing it with. But that's not, unfortunately, how it works out for her. She does have her boyfriend, Davis, who's always been in her corner. And now this new character, Angel, coming in, it's like her first friend. And I think it's beautiful to see that there are some people who do get ostracized sometimes just because of uh, coming into the situation the wrong way, like Odalie coming in, not telling her full truth of, of coming from a rich family, a rich community, and, and kind of blindsiding her community. And I think it shows just how easy it is to get off on the wrong foot with some people. For sure. For sure. Revy, for Angel, one of the funniest scenes, I don't want to spoil too much for, for anyone, but I love, there's a scene where you you make it to the school and you're dancing behind the counter while you're making the coffee. And I have a friend who is just like that. She can, I, it doesn't matter if you say, can you hand me that plate? You know, you're going to get 16 just to get the plate. <laughs> and how much of you is like that? As a professional dancer, everyone has this visual of dancers just everywhere they go there. There's a beat in their head. How, how true is that about most professional dancers? I think it's also something we don't always notice about ourselves until someone tells you you're doing it. So I know I dance sometimes when I eat um, or if I get like, I don't know, could someone says something like it's good news and like, you know, you start dancing and you don't realize. So that's definitely a, a, a real thing, but it's, it's something we don't really think about. You can just get lost in a moment and you know, forget anybody else is around. So that was like, I think very honest, you know, like her just (laughs) in her own world. She's, I mean, she's at work, but she's dancing. Um, That's a real thing. Dancers will dance anywhere. You know, those of us who are part of the Rhythmless Nation, we do it too when we get something good to eat, you know, we dance in our seats. It feels good. It feels good for everyone. (laughs) And lastly, Jay, before we wrap up, this is going to be a hot, sexy season. Can you give me one spoiler, but without context? And it doesn't have to be about your character, just like a little short, almost like an Easter egg. I would say everybody who you thought was in power is now switching. Ooh. The poles of power are, are shifting. Everybody's kind of figuring out a different side of them. Everyone has a new road their character is going down. So it's definitely surprising and spicy. (laughs) Mm -hmm. It is spicy indeed. Well, I thank you, ladies. I really enjoyed the episodes. The dancing is beautiful. You both are wonderful performers and have a great season and enjoy your new home on Stars. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, you guys. Wow. I only have seven minutes because I'm looking at all these shoes in the background, I am coming over to <laughs> your house. But I thank you guys. Uh, thank you so much for your time this morning. Congratulations, season three over to stars. It's a big bump in 
and resources and storytelling. It's a lot of sex and sexy. It's a it's a it's a great great season because we all like the drama and the sex, and that's what makes it fun. Yeah. So I'm going to begin with you, Kendra. You know, I had someone tell me earlier. I won't say what cast member, so we won't so we won't spoil it for the audience that. A spoiler without context for the season is the roles of power are shifting and the dynamic is shifting within, within the company. So with, uh, with that power dynamic shifting, how does, how does Poppy grow within this uh, shift of power that's going to happen at the school? At the company. Yeah, she grows. Um, she comes from high water. It's like her home and she's coming as just a dancer to then being on tour, to then stepping up to a new role of choreography and um, just being a leader. So she's able to grow in that and then also make decisions. She's used to, she's used to people making decisions for her or having to you know be in the back and stuff like that. So now she's able to make decisions. Now she's able to help with deals. She's able to you know come from the back and come to the front and have everyone see her grow and just mature into this this kind of businesswoman, but also dancer slash choreographer slash slash slash. So <laughs> we we need all those we need all those slashes. It's all about the yeah. multiple stream of income, you know. Yeah. And the more things you know how to do, the more power you can have, and that's going to be a, a great exploration this season. Terrence, over to you. The same thing. The power dynamic is shifting this this year, and and we get to see Rigo grow and evolve and and step into a new light in, in a sense does that make him a better version of himself does it make him a worse version of you of himself how is this shifting of power going to affect him over the season i think it depends on who you are in rigo's life uh how it affects them uh, at the end of the day rigo's always wanted to be a star he's been groomed to be a star since a kid like his, his dad everyone at the school everyone is aware who rigo is and who he's about to be including sage you know what i mean so it's inevitable that rigo is set to be the next sage however he has so many people trying to pull him and what they see as rigo the star that it causes conflict because it's it's with everyone that he loves it's everyone that he trusts so he, he he believes in everyone trying to pull him in whichever way he's going so yes you do see him feeling in bigger shoes for himself because at the end of the day he just wants to be that star to provide for his family and take care of everyone that he loves however uh trying to be loyal to everyone does have consequences that not only he has to experience everyone around him has to experience as well absolutely Mr. Hill, Mr. Hill, we get to <laughs> we get to spend some time with you, and you you know you burst onto the scene with a, a, a vengeance in these first three episodes that I've had a chance to see. And sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes you can be a person who's very talented, but maybe someone else steps into the forefront as a beneficiary of that talent and collaboration and things. The same thing for you. Will Marquise grow into a better person? Does it unearth any bad feelings that he has? Or how will he change over the course of the season? Um, I think Marquise is going through everything in his head. So the change is definitely on the way. I think he's shifting into so many different versions of himself. So to say who will be better and whether he'll be better or not, I mean, obviously I think that's for everybody else to decide, but in my opinion, I think he's growing in the best direction and he's gonna face a lot this season too. So you're gonna see him fall into old patterns and 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 uh, energies and responses to situations, you're going to see a completely different side of him on the other end of it. So um, he gets to live everywhere in between this range of old habits and, and, and new beginnings. And it's just it's just cool to watch, to be honest with you. You know, watching the, the the episodes, I'm a lover of TikTok like most people, but I like to follow real dancers on TikTok, not people like me who can't dance and are part of the <laughs> rhythmless nation, but people who can actually, actually dance. And it's made me kind of lean in and think, what are they doing? when they're out on tour what is this tour life really like mm. are there are people leaving marbles at the bottom of the stairs hoping somebody will fall and so they can step into the main light uh, <laughs> going, Kendra over to you when you 
watch back the episodes and you think of your own creative experience Mm -hmm. does the watching it back watching the show back make you laugh make you cry revisit experience in your own life how does it affect you as if you were on the outside looking in yeah I mean from previous seasons it is it's funny and it's cool because you get to see how myself and other cast members got to grow but it is also you know real life stuff that happens in the dance world there is drama there is you know, Poppy, she loses her spot to an, um, another dancer. That does happen. And then, you know, it's a white girl that, and that happens too. So it's like different things that happen on tour. No one's putting the marbles out and slipping. <laughs> <laughs> that would be crazy. But you do have to fight for your spot. You have to fight for your spot on a tour. You have to fight for your spot in, in these auditions and things like that. So people get to see that firsthand. Awesome. Well, I thank you guys for your time. I really had a good time watching these three episodes. I'm going to have to revisit them when everybody else, when Twitter gets into it, because it's going to be hot. Thank you so much for your time. Thank Thank you for your time. So much. Thank you. Well, thank you guys for your time this morning. This is a a cool, you got a a new spot where we can enjoy the show now on Stars for season three. And with the big move, we get to explore themes with a little bit more depth, more character exploration, more sex, more everything, more steamy, more hot. Beginning with, with you, Holly, transitioning over to a new home at Stars when you looked inward, when the team looked inward to how to make this season stand out from previous seasons, where did you begin for the, for the new platform? Um, at the very beginning, you know, um, I don't know. I mean, Jamaica and I talked about it. Um, you know, what they were saying was, you know, make it, make it premium. Like that's a word that they, that they use. And in a lot of ways, it was kind of going back to a lot of the stuff that Jamaica and I wanted to do from the beginning, but for lots of reasons we weren't able to do like how the camera moved, how it was lit, um, uh, the money that it took to do certain kinds of things. Um, really um, the canvas for, for storytelling was just much bigger so um, a big part of it is like the people that work on the show are really amazing from the department heads to like the actors who are also dancers, like everyone who works in the show is a hyphenate for one thing, including Jamaica and me and, and everyone. So it was like, let's create situations where everyone does what they do best and like really let them do it. That was kind of you know, I, Jamaica knows I call myself the midwife of the show. Um, so that was really creating situations where people could shine, whether that was like hair and makeup and our hair and makeup departments are both so good to, you know, to wardrobe, to production design, um, to everything else, you know, the dance department, you know, all of it, music, you know. Mm-hmm. Jamaica with it, with that, with being able to do a lot of those things that you wanted to do previously, were you feeling like a, a kid in a candy store? Did your mind go to something specific when you rid- when you guys first originated the show? Like, I'm going to do that now. And what is that thing? If, if there was such a thing that jumped out you with this new move? Um, no, n- nothing jumped out. It was definitely kid at a candy store, but it was just like being able to have the avenues and the sets and the design. And then the story actually lend to it to the script where we were able to just do more. This particular season um, led to telling a story that I thought was super dope and we were able to tell it very, very close to how it's done. And and it's an artist when they go out on tour and the trials and tribulations and something has happened with this artist and what do you do? And then there's these other artists that are coming and there's opening acts and then there's this and that and people think they're better than what they are and they're taking over and you got the dancers and their first time out on tour and what does that mean for them? And they are loving each other and not loving each other and, you know, still trying to figure out how to be adults inside of it and dance and dance and still inside of that. So it was like, oh, well, great shit. We can finally tell the the correct story we don't have to put a <laughs> put a plus on it that's now we can show what we really are doing and hopefully you know still 
with, you know, some fantasy inside of it that I wanted to be able to make sure that dancers now and dancers before me and choreographers that they are able to see themselves somewhere inside of the story and artists Mm -hmm. as well. With that storytelling, I can't lie. I love to follow dancers, like professional, real dancers Mm -hmm. on social media, like on TikTok and all that. And some of them tour and things like that. And it really got me thinking about what's really going on behind the scenes when these dancers are competing for the top spot. You know, you never you just never know what someone might do for that top spot with uh, with this new show, with this new season, uh, back over to you, Holly. Of course, there is the sadness with the passing of, of Naya Rivera and recasting Christina Milian as Colette, who is doing a, a really beautiful job. The chemistry between her and Neo is fantastic. Um, the family, Naya's family blessed the, the recasting, but what type of soul searching went on inside of you to to do that, there's always the internal dialogue. Like I wanna move my project forward, but I wanna be sensitive to who was there before. What was that internal discussion like for you? It was really deep and it was collective. You know, like um, we are very much a family unit on the show and there wasn't anything that I could like decide on my own in any stretch of the imagination. So like really on one on one hand, it was like recasting the role of Colette. Um, and because we were off the air for so long and because the season very much revolves around Colette, um, if we had to stop and then re-break the show and then rewrite the show, um, the show probably wouldn't survive that, which was okay, but that was the choice really fundamentally. And there's just so many people who do such excellent work on the show and who had been waiting so long for it to come back. Um, actors and department heads both, like it's just a very special, it's just a special show. I mean, so um, we all talked about it and we all, you know, we knew that Naya's family um, uh, blessed it and we decided that she'd want us to go on as a family and I think we wanted to be together too in a way and I, I just wanted everyone you know the most exciting thing about the stars platform is for more people to see what the people who make this show can do um, because they're they're great they're really great so um, I really hope that happens you know um, and I think you know it was really difficult but um, but it was very much the right decision I think um, Definitely. And, and lastly, for, for you, Jamaica, this is a marvelously talented, not, not even just acting, but just dancing in this uh, group is phenomenal with the addition of Revy Rose. When you, w- between, see, when you're, when you're doing choreography for a show like this, it's a huge, huge undertaking, probably more so than a concert tour or because there has to be different things for every episode. When you go back and rewatch what you've created, are you able to watch it with with fresh eyes or do as a creative person, do you think, "Mm, I wish I would have added a little more of this, a little bit of more of that. Is it easy for you to watch it back in, in, in this form? No, not yet. (laughs) I feel like years from now I will be able to, but right now, no, I, it was, it was hard to rewatch the three episodes because I was like, Oh, I would wish I could have done that. But that's, that's just a normal thing, but yeah, no, it, I'm, I can't, it won't be for, for some years until I'm like, you know, Jamaican, it's over, like, let it go. It was great. It's, it's really, the life, you know, it's the life of being like, creative. Oh, I'm sorry. The pressure that Jamaica is under to do what she does, you know, so like as a producer on the show, she's brought in the script stage, like really to discuss the story as well as how it's gonna be in dance, but for lots of reasons, COVID being one, Christina Milian, the goddess being pregnant Mm -hmm. as another, like we had to shoot all of the big dance things um, in a very short period of time. So Jamaica has to like the, what she has, you know, um, in concert with Gabor and, you know, and MK who does wardrobe, Gabor is our production designer. Like you guys just had to churn stuff out like if yeah. you had even a little more time or whatever, you know, that must be frustrating for you, I would think. 
it was it was very hard. It was it was very hard. <laughs> yes, no, but it was it was a big. It was a huge huge challenge. It, it was like if an artist got told today, one of your biggest artists in the world is like, yeah, well, I'm going out on tour. Everything is sold out, but got to have my whole tour ready by to ready to roll by October 30th, like <laughs> on today. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, okay, let's hire everybody. Let's get in. Let's make sure you look comfortable and that every creative part is like what we would do that you will, you have to live with forever. So yeah, it was. It yeah. Was I don't think little, people just, under, could possibly understand like the superhuman shit that you like conditions that you were under and we, it was like the height of covid the wor- the worst part of covid is when we shot so it was it was mm-hmm. over, yeah. but you, great you ladies did an incredible job i thank you i enjoyed the three episodes it was amazing thank you so much for your thank time you. i appreciate Love it bye bye thank you Better shake your booties for black girl nerds.